So this is running pretty good. I've got it running at about as slow as I can operate it and and have it keep running. It's kind of a funny thing. I I just sprayed a little bit of lubrication on the slide and in the cylinder. And when I did that, it actually slowed the engine down a little bit. I, I'm not sure why it would have done that. I would assume that it would have increased the the um, compression just for a little bit because I'm running pretty low. As you can see, I'm running probably between five and eight pounds. Maybe we can see that if we can trust that scale. Yeah, I'd say between five and eight pounds. It's, it's barely registering on this. And it's actually got good power. I mean, running it this slow, I can drag it down just a little bit and, and it, it, will still, it will still do better. So this is a big improvement from, let me back this thing up. This is quite a big improvement from when I first had it operating but if you look to the right side of the crank, as the crank's coming up around, you'll see a hole. So, yeah, that's where, that's where the crank was set. So I drilled the cam and I, I moved the cam about, I call that about 20 degrees, 15 to 20 degrees. And it made a big difference in, in where, the, where the valves were firing. When I started looking at this, I mean, I got it running, I did the video, and I didn't pay that much attention to where the engine was actually firing. And, and you know, because I just had other things on my mind, and it was running, and that was fine with me. But I, and I, I put a little note on the website, or, you know, on, the, on that YouTube video about this. It, um... It was fighting itself when I would turn it up. But now it seems like I've got it set. So let me just turn it up. I'm doing this in real time, by the way. Let's see what I can do here. So turning it up to where are we at? So about 18, 15 to 18, 10 to, 10 to 15. Let me pass this up again. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good power, too. That's reasonable power. So, that's nice to see. Let me just show you what the valves are doing. I'm, I'm barely putting any air into this engine. Um, the intake valve is now on the inside. I actually changed the location of the valves. So the intake valve is working pretty well. Tiny, tiny amount on the exhaust valve. Very little air, actually, escaping. Or, you know, I'm using very little air. So it's not chugging like it was before. So that's pretty good. That's probably, that's probably about 150 RPM, maybe 180 RPM. So let's see what happens if I, I don't want to go too crazy with it, but. That might be about 200 RPM. So it's nice and quiet. It has more power. It's running smoothly. So that's pretty nice. It's also it's also flexing that plate. I'll I'll deal with that later. But okay. Now I have got this limited, but for now that's pretty good. Let me I'm actually trying to slow it down some here.
Is that it? That might be about it right there. So really, even though I, you know, I, I, I kind of rescinded my annoyance on the rotary valves, I understand I can make them better. This set of valves just has, I have so many issues with them. You would think that something relatively simple wouldn't have that many issues, but about everywhere that they can be weak, they're weak. And that's just because they're, they're a prototype, I'm goofing with them. Um, I didn't really, you know, it's, it's like everything else you, 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 especially building, you know, if you're, if you're experimenting on stuff, you know, you experiment on it, you, you learn, hopefully through your experiments, but I'm liking these valves a lot, so I think it's time for me to try to run this on steam, so, but I'm real pleased with what it's doing here, so anyway, let's call that good. All right, so I'm playing around with it right now, running it on steam. I had to retime the hell out of it to get it to work. And I've got a couple of leaks, but they're not bad. But I'm running about 17 volts. I'm really not running that much. Yeah. I'm not running that much liquid through. But I really had to cut the intake down and I had to open up the exhaust a lot, which makes me think I may have to retime it. And <laughs> I'm trying to catch the exhaust and it's going everywhere. But so this is pretty cool. We just while it's while it's operating, just run through what I've got going on here. I've got about 30 pounds of pressure. Seems to be working reasonably well here. I have this almost closed. That valve is almost closed. I'm running about 17 volts with this little pump. Gee, thousand one, thousand two. So it's about 30 RPM. So I'm, I'm running, but you know, that, that can be figured out down the road. My little boiler is working pretty good. So, let's go ahead and open that up a little bit. Ouch. <laughs> that definitely helped it a tiny bit. Everything is really hot, and it makes sense it has to be. So, yeah, just, there we go. So I'm right on the edge of it working. That's why I think I probably need to retime it. I think that, that I need a lot more, well, yeah. I'll play around with it a little bit more, but I just wanted to catch it. This is the first time that it's actually operated on steam, but you can see the timing looks kind of jerky. I think that I might need even more exhaust valve. So I've taken the engine off of the steam and put it back on the air just to double check the timing to see what it was like. I find that the timing for the steam changed. I'm not running as efficient, not nearly as efficient as I was. Um, Initially, I'd adjusted it to run with compressed air, so so the difference between steam and air is obvious at this point. Um, I found that I had to to make it work on steam. I had to close my intake valve. Or I had to reduce the amount of intake coming in. So I had to to to, to slow shut my intake valve down. Um, so I had a less input, and I had to open the exhaust valve up as much as I could open it up and I still didn't get what I considered to be a, a reasonable a reasonable mix and I think what I'll probably have to do is I'll probably have to time it 
it probably advanced the timing, or maybe, well, I'll have to look and see which, which, but I'm going to have to change the timing. I believe that'll get me closer to the area that I need to be in. So I'll do that, which of course means taking this apart and drilling a hole. <laughs> That's okay. It's not a big deal. What I did was, this is an eccentric cam, and everything is off-center, so when I need to mark another hole, I made some centers. I'll put a center in the hole that the um, you see the head of the of the bolt that's the center right and then I'll put another center in the cam in, in the, the little the little connector for the for the uh, not the cam I'm sorry for the crank and that allows me to then draw an arc and figure out which way you know where I want to drill a hole whether I want to advance it or, or retard it well, for that matter I can even flip that flip that around I could turn it around and change my timing too anyway um, I put it, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'll do next, and I'll update you. But I just thought I'd let you take a look at this operating on just a few pounds of pressure. It looks to me like it's running between maybe 8 and 12 pounds. And it's, I mean, it's running really efficient. It's really running nicely. But again, it's running on air. We need to run it on steam.